Welcome to the Earth Science Region to View podcast series created by Homics Middle School Earth Science Department. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about physical weathering. Now in order to talk about weathering, you need to understand the difference between what erosion and weathering is going to be all about. To talk about weathering, it's the breakup of rock into smaller pieces called fragments. Sometimes it can actually be called sediments. Once those sediments exist, then they're going to be transported to another location through the process of what we call erosion. Now in this podcast, we're going to focus on the actual breakup of rock, the physical change within their sizes and shapes. Now, there are some agents of weathering, and they're going to include running water, moving wind, gravity, and glaciers. So they're all going to have some sort of an impact on the breakup of rock, the actual physical breakup. So those are just some of your agents. Now, the reason why rocks are going to go through in weather, it's all about the surface area of the rock. When you talk about equal quantities of rock, if you're going to compare a couple different samples of equal quantities in terms of mass, the smaller particles have bigger surface area because there's simply more of them. The bigger particles have less surface area because there's not as many of them. So the smaller particles, they get attacked more easily by wind and water outside and break down much quicker. So you see the big unit on the left-hand side, that's going to have a much smaller surface area than the 64 units on the right-hand side. Smaller particles in big quantity have a bigger surface area. So there are two types of weathering, and we're going to focus on the mechanical or physical aspect of the weathering process. There's also chemical weathering as well. That's going to be in a completely separate podcast. So. Mechanical or physical weathering is the actual breakup of rock. You're going to change the size, you're going to change the shape. There's going to be absolutely no chemical change whatsoever with the rock. So anytime you see an example of like a canyon, for instance, the running water is going to break up the rock, transport it to another location, and eventually what's going to happen is that rock is going to be broken up enough where you're actually going to get a dent in the ground called a canyon. So the first type of physical weathering is what we call frost wedging. And this is basically going to be a scenario that's going to be found in many times up in the northeast part of the United States. It's also called frost action or sometimes called ice wedging as well. Water's going to work its way into the crack in the rock. It's going to freeze and it's going to expand. As it expands, it makes the crack in the rock a little bit bigger. The bigger the crack gets, the more porous the rock is going to get and eventually the rock is going to break apart. So you can see here the pen is in the picture just kind of give you a little bit of scale. The crack in the rock the water works its way into the crack in the rock, freezes, and expands. Next type of physical weathering called root wedging, and this is very similar to frost action. Plants will grow out of the crack in the rock because there tends to be quite a bit of moisture in the cracks in the rock. There's enough water in there for the seed to germinate. Well, the bigger the plant gets, the bigger the root gets. The bigger the root is going to be, the bigger the crack in the rock. And eventually what happens? The rock will eventually break apart. And you can see here the tree growing out of the side of the rock there. The next type is what we call abrasion. And this can occur basically with wind and with water. It's basically a general term for the rounding out of rock. Well, wind is going to cause abrasion in very dry climates by picking up sand fragments and sandblasting the rock and smoothing it out. Water just has a natural tendency to smooth things out as it flows over top of it. So what happens here is that the rocks round themselves out in a special type of weathering called spheroidal weathering. And what happens here is that the particles will tend to lose mass and tend to lose volume because of those sharpened angles tend to break apart. So here's some water abrasion, and here's some wind abrasion. So again, it's the smoothing out or the rounding out of rock fragments. When you take a look at conglomerate, which is on the left, and you take a look at breccia, which is going to be on the right, you have significantly different looks here, very simply because the rock fragments in conglomerate have been rounded to a significant increase in rounding compared to the angled fragments in breccia. So there's the big difference there, but that tells you that the rounded fragments in conglomerate probably traveled a further distance, and they'll probably have undergone the weathering and erosion process for a much longer period of time. Exfoliation is a type of physical weathering only found with granite. Granite is going to heat up and expand. It's going to cool off and contract. And thousands of years of this expansion and contraction, eventually what happens is that outer part of the rock, the outer layer of rock, will eventually break apart, break apart and almost peel apart, almost like a shell on a hard-boiled egg. So you tend to get these big slabs of granite that break away 
from the original piece itself. So that's just a type of weathering called exfoliation. You can also get what's called differential weathering, which the name kind of explains itself. The rock's gonna break apart at different rates. Some rocks are made up of harder minerals, which are more resistant to weathering, so they kind of resist weathering. Other minerals are much softer, so they're less resistant, so they break away a little bit easier. So what happens here is you can get outcrops, or you can get cliff faces that look just like that picture where the top layer of rock is more resistant than the bottom layer. You know the top layer is more resistant because it sticks out a little bit further than the rock that's underneath it, so you get a little bit of an overhang there. So differential weathering, what's important about this is to be able to identify this on a Reed's exam. So picture on the left-hand side, you see rock layer three, that is more resistant because it sticks out a little bit farther. You see here the shale layer is less resistant on the right, very simply because it's been eaten away a little bit more. So you do have a specific climate only found for physical weathering, specifically here in the northeast part of the United States. Climate does play a very, very important role in the breakup of rocks, specifically here in New York. So you tend to need to get temperatures above and below freezing for the frost action, and you need a lot of moisture. So it's very important to have an idea about the important role that climate plays in the type of physical weathering here in the northeast part of the United States. Now you do have a couple relationships here that you do need to know. And the first one is as rock hardness increases, as a rock gets harder, weathering is going to decrease. Less weathering is going to take place with the really resistant rock. Surface area goes up, weathering time goes down. Okay, the more surface area that you have, the more surface area you have, the quicker it's going to wear away and to break apart. And as surface area is going to increase, your weathering rate increases as well. So you can see that rate is going to be a direct relationship, time is going to be indirect. So that's it for physical weathering. Hope you learned a little something here and we'll talk to you soon.